What is great, good, and real? My hope is to come to you today with the simple possibility to alter and change your life for however you see it, and hopefully in a better, more positive, sexy way. <laughs> Anyhow, maybe it is the knowledge, the exposure, and, and the opening up to possibilities around evolving, expressing, and manifesting an altered state of reality, however you define altered state. But one of the things that has struck me as I have gone through the possibility of expanding my knowledge, which hopefully translates into some sort of wisdom that is beneficial first and foremost for me, and then possibly you, is that it's time to get over yourself. And that the way forward for anything you see the greatest and brightest of possibilities is based off that fundamental truth, getting over yourself. So that's the theme, the mantra, and the message I will push as we move forward. And this again has come to me from, from the mindset, and that's a lot of what this is, the mindset and perspective of, due to my exposure to all of these higher possibilities, higher thought, consciousness, and dare I say, God, is that, The main blockage, the main failure point, the inability for us to proceed and expand out has everything to do with that we are not thinking what we should be thinking and or thinking for ourselves and quite possibly then could go through this life without ever having acted on one single original thought for yourself because you haven't gotten over yourself. And I want to read a quote to you from a book I'm reading called The White Book by Ramtha. And in it, very early on, the quote goes like this. Man has based his beliefs, his understandings, his thought process, his lives on something that life after life after life has proven itself a failure. Yet man, stumbling over his own altered thinking, imprisoned by his own arrogance, continues the steadfast hypocrisy that only leads to death. You need to get over yourself. And the only thing I can tell you positively is you need to just be. And let me explain it like this. Let's say you're like me and you're having one of those moments. You're tired of what you are tired of. You're tired of not having the money you want. You're tired of not having the environment you see. You're tired of not having the relationships that you, that you want to cultivate and, and expand and, 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 and absolutely just indulge in. You're not seeing the life that you see for yourself. And so you're angry. You're frustrated. You're constantly overthinking and it's, and it's evening because it's always evening and it's always dark when you're having these thoughts. And so you go outside on a really windy day into the night with the moon shining bright on you and you look up to the heavens, the stars, the universe, the infinity or the infancy, infinite, the, the infiniteness, you get where I'm going, of life, the vastness of life. And you decide just to shout and curse everything that is in and around life because it is not going how you want it to go. And, and to add a little bit of salt, you decide to hack a loogie and with the wind blowing in your face, you just spit at life and into the wind. What would you expect life and more specifically the wind to do? And this is not a trick question. The wind can only be, and the wind will only do what it is intended to do, which is as it is blowing at you, it will return the spit to you. Spit at the wind, only to spit at yourself and have it land on your face. Think about that and how it applies to life And the idea that I opened with the possibility that you will never have lived 
a single original thought ever. Let's, let's peel that back a few layers. If, if you need to get over yourself, why? And what is it specifically that you need to get over? Well, in this analogy, as you went out into the wind, what are you really frustrated by? What are you really angry at? What are you really blocked and impeded by? What does it have to do with your circumstances, your emotions, your experiences, and the idea that you are possibly in pain? The truth to not just being as the wind was just being and return to you what you gave it is that as you continue to express pain, as you continue to focus on loss, As you continue to highlight your losses, the wind, the world, the universe, God, and any other thing that is available in life can only just be and return to you just that. Continued pain, continued loss, continued failure. And the reality to this, the logic, logos, as I was reading another book, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, the Greeks focused on logos, the root being logic. Forget anything about what you should believe in, shouldn't believe in, if there's a God, if there isn't a God, if there's a higher being, whatever the possibility is, the logic simply says that based on how we are built, wired, and programmed, that what we focus on can only be returned to us because that is what we are highlighting and that is what we see. It is logic. It is not really harder to understand or fathom outside of that. And and therefore, the message around just being and getting over yourself and all the analogies that come with whether it is a hermetic philosophy, whether it's Neville Goddard, whether it's any of the phenomenal philosophers that have preceded us and talked about the possibility of attaining whatever it is you seek in life, if you continue to spit at the wind, the wind can't help but return the spit to you. And so the reality to your life and getting over yourself is I am not, I am not here to, to suggest you are not in pain, but have you considered why you are in pain? And the idea that if you continue to remain in pain, it is because you are highlighting, focused, and only lasered in on the many, many reasons for that pain. Said another way, There will always be reasons to continue to manifest more pain, but there is only one feeling of pain. There are many reasons and many things you will lose, but loss only feels one way. There are many, many reasons why you will fail and why you will not win, but there's only one feeling of failure. And so the reality to getting over yourself has everything to do with the output of what you are repeating over and over, the many reasons that are always going to be available to you, and focusing on alleviating the emotion associated, the pain, the loss, the failure, the overthinking, the I'm not good enough, everything that comes along with how you feel and how you explain the many reasons which ultimately are symptoms of your life today. You have to get over yourself and just be. And if it wasn't already clear, it is because the many reasons available for pain, for loss, for failure, are never going to cease. They're never going to be eliminated. It is never going to go away and not be a possibility. Framed another way, love is hate. Joy is sadness. Acceptance is disgust. Surprise is anticipation. Such is the dichotomy that exists in the world of emotions, thoughts, feelings, and life. You have to get over yourself and just be. So what do we actually do to not just make this make sense, but have it be a positive forward flow for us to practice and, and maybe think our own thinkings and live life 
as our own possible selves, the truest selves that we can be. Firstly, what I believe, what I do on a regular basis, you need to treat the symptoms, as I referenced, everything you are experiencing and repeating and spitting at the wind and into life is being returned to you. And in order for you to understand the symptoms, you need a diagnosis. I really want to also frame it this way. If you could consider that you're likely watching this, have watched things like this, and are doing research like myself. I also talked about how I brought in my, my, my possibilities based on all the, the information I'm processing to hopefully manifest some wisdom and an altered state of reality. We're really, really good at learning what others think and feel and then do based on what others think and feel, which means that we're trying to alter our own lives based on someone else's diagnosis. So you need your own diagnosis, right? And by doing this, you can also limit what it is you're experiencing and treat it for what it is versus the many, many reasons. If you go back to the, the, the many of possibilities on why you're experiencing pain, you go to the doctor, I, I don't feel well. well. What are your symptoms? I got diarrhea, fever, vomiting. There's a prescription for that, right? Maybe you have a pain in your abdominal. Maybe you have a pain in your chest, your elbow. Whatever it is, they're going to pinpoint and streamline where that, that symptom is to give you an overarching diagnosis, thereby treating the diagnosis or the symptoms through the overarching diagnosis. So pain is always going to be pain, but as you are feeling that pain, once you can process how to manage that pain, then it doesn't matter why you're in pain. Eventually, you'll learn how to get over your own pain and like the wind, just be. And if I could, if I could relate to it in some way, I feel like for the past week or two, I've had this persistent headache. And I'm talking about my entire cranium. I could feel back to front. It feels like it's, it's, it's even from below, behind the ear, all the way to the forefront of my wonderful cranium into where my consciousness rests. A massive pain. A massive, massive pain. And of course, you know, a little Motrin, Advil, extra strength. All that stuff is what you would use to treat it at least in theory, based on, on, on the practices we do today. But I needed a self-diagnosis. What is it about my experiences recently that is causing this pain? Self-diagnosis, self-reflection. I started to kind of unwind, unwrap, and peel back what my experiences have been lately over the past couple of weeks that could have allowed this pain to manifest. And as I got deep into thinking... I realized a lot of my research around what I think I want to do with this channel, how I want to broadcast myself out, was, was, was teetering into comparing myself to other channels and their success and my perceived lack of success, which ultimately, ultimately means I'm losing sight of the vision, right? And losing sight of the fact that what I'm doing this for needs to be me first and I need to let it be. Point, point being, if I can really if I can really, really self-reflect and look at the symptoms and diagnose it based on your comparing because you believe somehow that you deserve as much success as the success you're seeing others have. And it's not that you don't, but that mindset, that frame of thinking is focusing outside of what I can control. I have, once I click upload, it's going to get no views, a gazillion views, and, and, whether, and, and something in between. I have no control over the possibilities of zero to a gazillion. But if I, if, I, if I am only highlighting what I believe I am seeking based on what I believe I deserve that is predicated on an outcome, particularly based on what someone else is doing, then I am spitting into the wind and I'm not just letting it be. Some of the practices associated with allowing yourself some self-diagnosis, the ability to treat your symptoms. What is it you're feeling 
and why that would be a root cause. Meditation is always a great way to just sit with yourself. Forget the, forget the spiritual benefits. Forget the possibilities to, to tap into higher levels of consciousness and, and, and reach God, as some people believe that they can do, that we all are God and that possibility. Forget that. Just sitting with yourself, and if we can think that what we're thinking has nothing to do with ourselves, just watch what happens with your thoughts. See it and see them pass by. Ultimately, what occurs, too, when you do this is as you're sitting with these thoughts, it'll align with a symptom that usually manifests itself in some sort of anxiety, overwhelm, pain. You're sitting there, your back starts hurting, been there. But if you sit and you process and allow things to just be, you can be less likely to spit into the wind and start to learn to flow with the wind. And so if meditation is a good practice because it allows you to start seeing what you are thinking, another form of positivity and an outlet that you should embrace is to journal. And when you start to journal, it is obviously expressive in that you are taking what you're thinking and putting it to paper. And aside from there is some neuroscience that would align with, with, with the power of possibility and positivity when you do this, I want to return back to logos and logic. It's not just the writing down of your thoughts that will allow you a release. It will allow you a reprieve and some possible freedom. It is that, as I can relate to just, just recently, I think it was the day before yesterday, when you go back and read something that you may have written down a year or two ago and you reflect in that moment of what those words are and that those words truly are you, it is a release. And that release, again, aligns with treating the symptoms of what's occurring because the majority of what you will see, which meditation, meditation and journaling allows, is for you to free yourself from yourself and start to let it be. A lot of logic. Another powerful way to address the symptoms, as simplistic as they are, and something you haven't probably haven't already heard and is repeated in this space regularly, is taking a walk, allowing yourself to align with the universe. There's actually a Netflix documentary I just started watching that talks about the interconnectedness of the entire world, the ecosystem of life. And if you could think about the logic, if we are all just beings and we are just trying to be, then walking by yourself, I encourage you by yourself, even if you have others to do this with, and yes, sometimes take your wife or your significant other with you or your kids or whomever. But the power of a walk in nature, outside, in the universe, alone, allows you another form of freedom, another release. It's very simple logic. Why? You can start to really think about how you too are connected. And if you're just trying to let it be and be one with the wind and not always spit at it, why not go out and embrace the universe and allow it to be bigger than you and know that you can get over yourself. Just be. All of these very basic fundamentals that are preached and talked about over and over, the concepts derived from, in my opinion, the logic foundational components of freeing yourself from yourself and the possibility of just being. Because the reality is this, and, and, and this is what I believe is the ultimate. I was thinking about the paradox of life. I was looking for that word. Not sure it applies in this moment, but really what it is you possibly are seeking is that the truth to life, as I continue to repeat over and over, either on videos or in my own limited brain, as I talk to myself regularly, is that as you are just being, the pain doesn't go away. Sometimes it doesn't even subside, it intensifies, particularly if you're doing what you think you should be doing to be successful. 
And when that does arise, your ability to see the pain, feel the pain, and ultimately, dare I say, embrace the pain and be at peace with whatever it is you feel will lead to the success you seek in life. Because there's nothing about what you're experiencing that you should repeat if it's not conducive to positivity for your life. There's nothing about what you're experiencing that is hurting you, that should impede your growth. There's nothing about what you are experiencing on any of the negative spectrums of emotions that can't allow you to still return to peace and just being. Because the alternative is to continue to go through that process, continue to endeavor out onto that negative end of the spectrum, and ultimately go outside at night because it's always dark. Ignore the fact that the moon is shining and while the wind blows in your face, spit right at it. Change your mind, change your life. I am who I say I am. Stay rich.